In February of 2010, a woman went to a friend's sleepover. Unknown to her, she would be tortured for three days and then dumped in a trash can following her murder. Living in Pennsylvania, it wasn't easy for Jennifer Dougherty to socialize as she suffered from a disability which left her with the mentality of a 14-year-old. However, soon she would befriend a group of people who are now infamously known as the Greensburg Six. Before I get too far into this, I'd like to give you a chance to support myself and this channel by purchasing the novel The Junkyard Kids on Amazon. Despite having the word kid in the title, this is not your child's bedtime story. Along with having an intricate plotline and multi-dimensional characters, this is a tale of madness, despair, and some of the most barbaric sides of life someone can experience. After witnessing a serial killer brutally murder his parents, our psychologically disturbed protagonist and his younger brother end up fending for themselves on the streets of an urban wasteland. This in turn leads them to group up with three other unwanted misfits. The five of them eventually seek shelter in an abandoned junkyard on the outskirts of town. If that wasn't bad enough, the group ends up being the witnesses to a murder and our protagonist subsequently killing the murderer in self-defense. With two dead bodies in their decrepit abode and a city filled with corrupt police officials, they decide to dump the bodies in a nearby river. Realizing they'll be caught, the group makes plans to escape the city. Unfortunately, things take a turn when they stumble upon clues to the city's inactive serial killer. Putting their plans of escape on layaway, the group pursues the bloodthirsty murderer. Unfortunately, the serial killer begins his pursuit of them as well. Along with having an awesome cover, also included are over 40 amazing chapter illustrations. As Amazon reader Annie puts it, the story is filled with happenings. It's refreshing to read a story that isn't full of filler. If this book sounds interesting, go ahead and look out for the thumbnail at the end of this video. It'll bring you to a reading of the first few chapters. And if you buy the book and enjoy it, consider leaving a positive review on Amazon. I may just feature your review in one of my videos. A link straight to the book is also in the description of this video. And now, back to the story. It was on February 10th. 2010 that Jennifer informed her parents that she would be spending the night with her friend after attending a doctor's appointment. After receiving a ride from her stepfather, Jennifer hopped onto a bus to her friend's apartment in Greensburg. Before this, Jennifer wrote a note to her mother, this being, Mom, I hope you have a good day at work and I love you very much. Unfortunately, this would be the last words she would ever say to her mother. Once she entered her friend's apartment, things quickly spiraled out of control. According to official court documents, once Jennifer entered the apartment, she supposedly made sexual advances toward a man named Ricky. Ricky was already in a relationship with a woman by the name of Angela Marinucci. The next day, Ricky called Angela to inform her of what Jennifer attempted to do the previous night. Enraged, Angela made her way to the apartment. Soon, the people inside the apartment began taunting Jennifer, calling her names, stealing items from her, and pouring mouthwash on her purse and clothing. This slowly escalated to them throwing empty soda bottles at Jennifer's head. From here, one of the group members choked her until she fell to the floor, tears streaming down her face. This is the point where Angela arrived to the apartment. Angela and another woman named Amber accompanied Jennifer to the bathroom. Jennifer denied any interest in Ricky. However, still angry about what she was told over the phone, Angela grabbed Jennifer and slammed her into a metal towel rack several times before hitting her in the head and chest. Jennifer was then dragged to the living room where spices and oatmeal were poured on her head. Ricky directed Jennifer to the shower where she cleaned herself up. Thinking the group was done, Jennifer exited the shower. Unfortunately, things would escalate much further. Upon entering the living room, she was forced to remove her clothing. After throwing her clothes out the window, the group then cut her hair off. 
A sock was then stuffed into her mouth and one of the members SA'd her. At this point, Angela decided to spend the night but needed her medication from her house. She was accompanied by Amber and Ricky. Before leaving, Ricky instructed two of his friends, Robert Master and Peggy Miller, to keep a close eye on Jennifer, disallowing her to leave the apartment. Once they returned, they found that Jennifer had tried to leave. She was beaten and then force-fed Angela's medication, eventually being left in the living room while the group went to sleep. The next morning, a fight ensued between Jennifer and Angela over a soda. This resulted in Angela pushing Jennifer to the ground and hitting her. Retaliating, Jennifer kicked Angela in the stomach. With this, Angela reported to Ricky that Jennifer had killed their baby. This is despite Angela not being pregnant. Ricky confronted Jennifer asking, if you want to kill my kid, why should I let you live? Around this time, Jennifer received a call from her sister Joy. Joy would later state that Jennifer's usual voicemail had been replaced with, you've reached the phone of Melvin and Amber. Angela demanded Ricky choose between her and Jennifer. A meeting between all members of the group took place, where all six discussed what kind of mother Jennifer would be to the baby. Being battered, drugged, and essayed, Jennifer was described as being out of it and most likely wasn't able to participate. During a second meeting, Jennifer was dragged to the bathroom and repeatedly struck in the head with the towel rack. Afterwards, she was forced to drink a concoction of laundry detergent and Angela's prescription medication. Eventually, Jennifer was taken to the living room where Christmas lights were bound to her feet and nail polish poured on her face. A third meeting was adjourned where all group members voted to murder her. At this point, Ricky forced Jennifer to write a note stating she was taking her own life. Once she did, Amber and Melvin took Jennifer to the bathroom and turned off the lights. Jennifer was forced onto her knees and the door was shut. Melvin asked Amber if she was ready, to which she said yes. After stuffing Jennifer's mouth, the two asked her if she was ready to die. Melvin then stabbed Jennifer over 20 times in the chest before slitting her throat. With blood pooling on the ground and Jennifer gasping for breath, Melvin exited the bathroom, exclaiming that she was not dead yet. Angela's response to this was, kill her. Ricky then took the knife, slit Jennifer's wrists, and then choked her to death with the Christmas lights. Another meeting was called, this time to discuss what to do with the body. In the end, Ricky and Melvin would put Jennifer's body into a plastic bag in a trash can. When they returned, the four others were informed that they had left the trash can under a truck. Feeling no remorse, all six members of the group then went to bed. Jennifer's body was discovered the next day in a middle school parking lot. According to official documents, the body had multiple incised wounds, abrasions, and contusions. Several different prescription drugs were found in Jennifer's system. The cause of her death was determined to primarily be due to the stab wounds of her chest, which penetrated her left lung and her heart. After performing the autopsy, the pathologist stated, with the intent to cause pain and suffering, the victim would have remained conscious after the initial infliction of the wounds, bled for a couple of minutes, lost consciousness, and finally died within four to six minutes. The same pathologist would later go on to state that out of thousands of autopsies, this was one of the most horrific cases he'd seen. The torture that Jennifer endured lasted for approximately 30 hours. All six members of the group were promptly arrested, the death penalty being sought for Amber, Ricky, and Melvin. Amber would later receive a lesser sentence for agreeing to testify against the others. Amber, being pregnant at the time, gave birth in jail where the child was put into foster care. Two members of the group, Peggy Miller and Robert Masters, never laid a hand on Jennifer. Peggy and Robert were not accused by police of participating in the murder. 
Despite this, Robert and Peggy were still sentenced due to voting for Jennifer to die. Peggy did express guilt for her role, exclaiming, I am sorry and I am guilty. She was my friend and I should not have voted for her to die. As for Angela, a cellmate would later testify that she was so excited to see herself on the news in jail that she jumped up and down on her bed. Her being only 17 at the time of the murder did not qualify for the death penalty. However, she is currently serving life in prison without the possibility of parole. Thank you for watching my video. If you are interested in the novel mentioned earlier, feel free to click on the thumbnail on screen now to be brought to a sample reading. Either that, or click the link in the description to be brought directly to the Amazon page where you can purchase the book. Get it instantly to your phone or tablet through the Amazon Kindle app. That's all I have for now. See you next time.